Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm thinking to show you guys some of our abandoned houses, which is going to be really exciting. The thing is, we can't go inside any of them if they are occupied, so we're going to take a look and see if any are without a roof. I think it's fine to go see. So let's take Let's just go. Let's just And as always, if you choose to subscribe, just make sure you click the bell so you get notifications on all new videos. Before we continue, I just wanted to give you guys a little update. You probably noticed that my last two videos are from Easter. The reason is I'm stuck in a Bulgarian hospital with pneumonia. I don't know how I caught this. It's been absolutely terrible and I wasn't even sure I'll be able to post, but I really love posting and it kind of gives me like a burst of energy. So that's why they're from Easter and um, I'll give you guys more updates, but for now, I hope you enjoy. Horsey and I are grateful for the beautiful view, despite the slightly dirty windows. The view is really encouraging and beautiful. And the room's really not bad at all, but we're missing our farm. So let's get back to happier places. And notice this home is really tall. This is like three stories, which is pretty, or it's two, maybe it's two story. You know what? Let's go see. Oh, this is exciting. These people were most likely, actually almost certainly, wealthier than these people. So if you were wealthier, you could have stone all the way up. Uh, let me just make sure these aren't graves because the old cemetery is... I don't want to step on anyone's... The old cemetery is nearby, but this looks like a fence to me. It doesn't look like a grave. Okay. Oh, this is so fun. My favorite thing ever is to go and look into old houses, but you have to be very careful. You have to make sure it's not occupied because you can't go breaking and entering clearly. And also, it's a little scary because you don't know what you're going to find. It's better to go with someone. But... Okay. Yeah, it is three stories. Here you can see the floor caved in. Down there, there's probably an entrance where they kept animals. Over here, well, let's see if I can get you closer, would be the second floor. And up there, the third floor. Wow, crazy. There is only one home that I know of here that's like truly, truly three stories. I've showed it many times before. I'll add links at the end of this video to other videos if you guys want to see, in case I don't film it today because it's on the other end of the village. This one, I have to ask, but I thought the other house was the only three-story home. So I have to ask. This one, though, it looks like the first floor is kind of into the ground. So maybe that's why. So back in the day, and still to this day, our house actually has it on the door. Families would write their names on the door you can see that they're even numbered so each house everyone knows if you have mail or something where the mail is supposed to go and the name of the people Panaistubi. i don't know that last name Panaistubi. maybe i'm reading it wrong because it's kind of far with the naked eye but i thought that's kind of fun right down that way are puliani and gardens. Puliana is like, um, let me try to show you, fields and gardens. I just hope there's no snakes. And no, you can't see. Oh, so beautiful. Anyway, yes, fields and gardens. And then the river, which I've showed you guys many times before. If you guys want, you could check out some of my other videos for the river because I'm not really planning to go there today. We'll see though. Mushrooms are starting to come out. We've been getting a little bit of rain, which is nice. Oh, 
we struggle with rain big time in this area because, all right, don't, I'm not gonna bother you, don't worry. You saw her chickens. Because we are in, it's just, geographically, it's a little bit of a weird spot. We are in the mountains, but we're kind of in like a, like a hollow in the mountains. So we're surrounded by the mountains and the hills and the clouds kind of swirl around us. So we watch the thunderstorm happening right over there. It's kind of a tease. We see the rain, but we don't usually get the rain. And it's a big problem out here because all these crops that we have, especially the watermelons in the summer, the melons, it's really tough. I remember my grandpa would really struggle with rain and I'd be like, I'd, I was little, so I'd be like, Grandpa, what's the problem? It's such a nice day. And he would tell me, hmm, how are we gonna eat if there's no crops? And obviously as I got older, I understood the severity of the situation. Let's see if I can show you a little bit into this house. Oh yeah, what's really amazing also about these houses is I wish you could feel the air. It's really hot today. I'd say it's like 27 degrees Celsius. Yet inside the house is cool. It feels like there's an air conditioner inside. And it's because the houses are built out of, let me see if I can show you up close. All right, here is the first layer that I was telling you guys about. These are all stones from our river, right? And then over here we have the wooden beams that protect against earthquake and earthquakes and they there's a nice part where you can well they would go across up there you can see another layer of them see right over there so the beams would go across enough so so the houses won't fall during earthquakes and here is this top layer that I told you acts as insulation and this is we have this on the inside, at least on my house, on the inside and the outside, and then it's painted over with this mazilka. So this is really what keeps the houses warm in the winter and cool in the summers. It's really amazing. Okay. And here you can't see, but I, I strongly suspect that it's thatch on the second half, while as this home, you can see really well, maybe from this angle a little bit better. Here, let's see. Uh huh. You can see it's fully stone, and you can see where the wooden beams rest. Okay. How fun is this? So many new sections to explore, so many new little nooks and crannies. Population wise, we only have about, it's 30 something. It keeps fluctuating because people pass away uh, and then new people come to live. Not new, but the, the kids. Believe it or not, the kids and the grandkids little by little are moving more and more, moving back home more and more. Now we've explored this home together. Oh, what? There are people here. Yes. I love when I see people returning because it just brings life. It, it, it shows that this village is not going to die. That wasn't there. Looks like they washed their kilimche, their rug, and are drying it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so when I was little, there was always a big fear among all of us, especially the older, you know, my grandparents, because I was little. I didn't really understand the severity until I grew up at least into my teens. And I understood, that's funny. Oh my God, do you hear that music? That's my boyfriend. I bought him speakers for his birthday last year and professional speakers, huge speakers for like a club and every day around this time. No. Hmm. 
Oh, it's because it's holidays. I was gonna say people are sleeping at around this time. We were really careful not to wake people up. Everyone, there's like an unspoken code of courtesy that just exists here. No one says anything to each other. No one yells at each other. We just know. But it is, it's right after Easter, so it's still considered the holidays and we kind of could break the rules a bit. So what I was trying to get to before, before we get into what all of this is, is we would all be very afraid that the village is just gonna die out. I would always insist that that's not gonna happen. And I still believe so to this day. And I feel like um, my guess is proving right because everyone, not everyone, but a serious amount of the families out here, their grandkids have come back and started renovating their homes, us included. So it's really exciting. This grave, which was actually just recently restored by the village uh, Luvji, how was Luvji? The hunters, the village hunters, belongs to a man, a man, a man, a boy, I don't know. He looks really young. Look at him. Okay, I guess, yeah, a man, but very young. A young man who sadly out on a hunting trip was shot and killed accidentally. And this is actually a family member of my boyfriend. Uh, everyone out here is like, a lot of us are related to one another. I don't actually have any other relatives out there, but my boyfriend does. Our family kind of, I actually don't know why we don't have relatives. I think I have one other family I'm related to, but yeah. And the year was 1902. I don't know if that's the year he was born or the year he died, but you can get an idea of what we're talking about here, how old this grave is. And it clearly says here that he was killed, tragically killed during a, um, a hike. Hike is when the hunters gather, the hunt he was killed on a hunt. And you know what? I know I said earlier that I might not make it out to the river, but we're really getting close. So let's just head over. Now that I think about it, I've never actually filmed the farm during Easter before, during spring, more so spring. Easter I have filmed, but I kind of stayed home. I've never filmed the farm in spring. I think I've only done winter, summer. So even if you guys have seen some of this before. I think it's really interesting because look, a couple of you guys know this used to be full of full grown sunflowers. Then at one point it was covered in bali. Bali are like um, these little rolls of food that we, like animal feed, made into rolls. <clears throat> this, because I'm still Inexperienced, I actually don't know what this is. So please, if you guys know, help me out. I'm gonna go ask, but hmm. I still have a lot of learning to do, but I do think I've made a lot of progress. So I am happy about that. And here is that same field just two months later. So you can see the little baby sunflowers have grown up into these beautiful sunflowers that are taller than me. So I'm going to stop today's video here. I hope you guys enjoyed exploring some of the old abandoned houses. I, again, can't go inside any houses where there's even a small chance of them being occupied. I would never want to break and enter into anyone's home. But anytime there's a window open or the roof has already fallen down, it should be just fine. So I'll keep scoping and see if we can go into any more and also see if maybe we can just get some permission. For now, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys again next week.